I have to may I may have to do a uh, next Tuesday, but in any case, I'm going to do it until next Thursday to turn in the assignment anyway. So uh, you should be able to uh, start working on it uh, and uh, try to finish as much of it as you can. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe you may have to do one of the questions after the Tuesday's lecture. But uh, <coughs> last time I uh, talked about the normal distribution. Last time I talked about the normal distribution and uh, today I want to show you how uh, you can uh, use a normal distribution, uh, I mean how you can use your calculator to do normal computations. Now, how, we, how did we calculate normal probabilities the last time? I showed you how to use the standard normal distribution table. And um, you could look, uh, if you want the area to the uh, left, you just look up the number from the table. If you want area to the right, it's 1 minus the table value. Area in between is the difference between the table values. And this was only for the standard normal distribution. And if you have a non-standard normal distribution, in other words, if you have a normal distribution with mean something other than zero, and or standard deviation something other than one, then uh, you first had to standardize and then use the standard normal distribution table. And the standardization, standardization was x, whatever the given x value is, x minus mu divided by sigma. And uh, we also first discussed several properties of the normal distribution. But now, today, I want to show you how to use a calculator and how to use the mini tab for this purpose uh, using a calculator. Key that says distributions. You see a key that says distributions. Oh yeah. Second distribution. Right. right. Usually it's a second V I R V A R S key. But so you go to distribution. So step one. You go to distribution. Now, from distributions, scroll down and choose normal CDF. And we did this before. We did this with binomial. But now I'm going to choose normal CDF. Now, if you are going to use a calculator, you don't have to worry about You don't have to worry about standardizing or anything like that. You can just enter the numbers as given. Uh, here is how you are going to enter the numbers. First, you are going to enter the lower limit. Then you put the comma, enter the upper limit. Comma mean, comma, standard deviation. Suppose I have a normal distribution with uh, mean 57 and variance uh, 16. So the mean is uh, 57 and standard deviation is 4. And I want to calculate probability of x being less than uh, 61. Now let's say 60, x being less than 60. 
So what I want to calculate here is, here is 60, and I want to calculate this probability. Now, I'll go and I'll say normal CDM. Now, what's my uh, lower end point here? Negative infinity. Now, we cannot write infinity on the calculator. If you want, you can type in an 8 and turn your calculator sideways, but that does not always work. So, uh, we cannot write infinity on the calculator. So, how, can, how am I going to express negative infinity? What I'll do is I'll put a negative, a very large number. For example, negative 10,000. Sure. So negative 10,000 should be big enough. Negative 10,000. Comma, the upper limit. Upper limit is 60. Comma, the mean, which is 57. Comma, standard deviation, which is 4. And hit enter, and you should get your, the answer right away. What's the answer? I'm sorry? 0.773. 0.773. What if I have the same mean 57 standard deviation for, and I want probability of x being greater than, say, uh, uh, 66. In this case, I want this area, right? So here I'll write normal CDF. The lower limit should be 66. Upper limit is actually positive infinity, but since I cannot write positive infinity, I'll just say write a very large number, say 10,000. Then the mean, then the standard deviation. And what do you get? So this is much faster than using the table because you don't have to standardize, etc. Et and if you want to use the calculator to calculate area in between two numbers, for example, if again mu is let's say uh, you have mu is equal to 23, standard deviation is equal to 5.1 and you want to calculate the area or the probability of x being between 17 and uh, 25, then in this case you'll write normal CDF, then you put the lower limit which is 17, comma the upper limit which is 25, comma the mean 23, comma the standard deviation which is 5.1, and what do you get? So this is how you would use your calculator. Uh, to, uh, now you have two options for the tests. You can either use the table or you can use the calculator, whichever one you find easier to do, do that. Um, uh, if you plan to use a table, make sure to make a copy of the table and bring it with you, unless you plan to memorize the entire table for that. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, make sure uh, to make a copy of the table and bring it with you to the class. Uh, and you can use you uh, I do. Uh, usually, we use software, of course, to calculate uh,
are we going to use Minitab? Yes. Yes, if the system permits. we had a chance we just beat somebody like really really bad i don't know i think it was venezuela or something it was like a really big punch it was like, like seven hours or something all right uh, uh i guess uh, we'll have to do this tuesday i'll have to all the it people and let them set it up for us 
Uh, uh, but can you show it under the camera? Uh, I will uh, try to do that, yeah. I'll try to do that. That's probably the only way to do it. Uh, not to the front. That gives this. Dude, I'm telling you, these guys will trade off. But what about him? Like, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a sketch or something. You can make a sketch out of like this. So yeah, I will give him a devil just use the dog. Yeah, I'll fair with one of those too. Oh, it works. What? <laughs> okay. No way. Now, um, yeah, fair as go. Anytime you want to work with a, anytime you want to work with a, a distribution, uh, the easiest way to do this, the easiest way to do this on me, Dave, is to go to graphs. I really want to record this really quickly. Graph and choose the probability distribution plot. The graphs probability distribution plot. Now when you get to probability distribution plot, of course you have two alternatives. Uh, you can choose view single. I mean you have more alternatives, but the way we are going to use it. You can choose view single. Uh, view single just graphs the distribution. Or you can choose view probability. It graphs the distribution and shows you the probability that you want to calculate. Usually, usually uh, we are going to uh, use a view probability. Uh, now, so far, uh, I discussed two continuous distributions, right? Uh, which ones were they? And normal and uniform. So let's start with uniform. So let's just uh, go to uh, say view probability and say OK. Now here you will see a list of all the distributions that we will study in this course and many more. Uh, I'm using the word you will see a little bit uh, loosely here. So, so, uh, so what, what is the probability distribution plot? Right. Probability. Right. And what's it say in the blue? Uh, well, they, you cannot see it, but those are the names of the distributions. So it's a case. it starts with the uh, B, the beta distribution. Then you have the binomial distribution, Cauchy distribution, chi-square distribution, the exponential distribution. So it goes in alphabetical order and goes through all the distributions. So what you do is you go down that list and choose the distribution you want. Uh, so I want uh, uniform. So I choose the uniform distribution. Now, it asks for any time you enter a distribution, it will ask for the appropriate parameters. Uh, for the uniform distribution, the appropriate parameters are the beginning and the ending points of the interval. So it asks for the lower end point and the upper end point. So let's say uh, we are dealing with a uniform distribution, say between uh, 5 and 17. So I will enter 5 as the lower end point and 17 as the upper end point. And I will say, <coughs> now uh, let us say the problem we are trying to solve is this one. Uh, we have a uniform distribution. between 5 and 17. And I want to find probability of x being less than 3. Or x being less than, say, 30. All right? OK. So uh, to write the probability, I go to this part on the, in the box that says shaded area. Now remember, probabilities are areas. So you chose your distribution as uniform. Now you're going to choose the shaded area so you can show the probability. 
So you choose the shaded, you go to a shaded area. And you are going to enter an x value. So you choose x value because you want x less than 13. Now, the right tail means greater than, left tail means less than, this means in between. So you want less than, so you choose left tail. And you want 13. And you hit OK. And uh, so you get the graph of the uh, uniform distribution between 5 and 17. This is the area that, uh, that corresponds to x less than 13. And this is the value, the numerical value. So this gives you both the numerical value of the probability point, in this case 0 0.66663, and also shows it on the uh, graph. Uh, I have a way to make this bigger. Can I zoom in on the laptop? Okay. Anything to help would be fine. Oh, wow. Okay. That looks much better. Thank you. Magic draw for mini tab. Mini tab. Yeah. Alright. No, it's crooked. Alright. Very good. It was good. I think this is the way we'll go. We'll thank our friend here. Thank you. Good man, man. Good man. Of course, I'll take all the credit for this. After all, I asked. Right. Uh, so, um, uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, try to answer similar questions now with the uh, normal distribution. Now, if I have a normal distribution, uh, suppose I have a normal distribution n, normal. And mean is say uh, 37.8, and standard deviation is 3.14. And I want to answer these questions. What's the probability that x is less than 33? What's the probability that x is greater than uh, 41? What's the probability that x is between 31 and uh, say uh, 42. <coughs> or let's say 40. <coughs> so to answer questions like this, again, <laughs> and also, of course, um, you can always right click on any graph you create on Minitab. You can right click on that. And here you have this uh, choice copy graph. Click on that. Then you can copy that graph into your Word document. And, uh, uh, so, and then once you, it copies as an image, and then you can make it smaller, larger, center it, do whatever you like with it in your Word document. All right. So, I go to graph, I choose probability distribution plot, view probability, because uh, I'm, I just don't want just the uh, graph of the distribution. I also want to see the probability. And I say, OK. Now here, I choose the normal distribution. Here is the normal. And as I said, as soon as you choose a distribution, it, uh, the mean will ask for the appropriate parameters. For example, when you choose the uh, 
uh, uniform distribution, we need to have asked for the upper and lower limits of the integral. Here, of course, it will ask for the mean and the standard deviation. So you'll enter the mean and the standard deviation. So for mean, I'll enter 37.8. For standard deviation, I'll enter uh, 3.14. Then I'll go to the shaded area. I'm going to enter an x value. In first case, I want x to be less than 32. So I left tail and 33. I click OK. And so this is the probability I want. This is the corresponding area. And the numerical answer is 0 0.063, etc. So there is, in this case, there is about a 6% chance that uh, x will be less than 32. steps. This is already saved here, so I go to the shaded area. This time I want x to be greater than, so I choose right tail, and I want x to be greater than 41. And I say OK, and I get this guy. So, there's about a 15% chance that x will be greater than 41, and this is the corresponding area. So, uh, uh, of course, you get the exact same answers, exact same way from your calculator, but the advantage of Minitab is it also gives you a graph that's associated with that, and you can cut and paste that graph into your uh, Word document and show also numerically and graphically what, what you're doing. And if you want in between, again, everything is already saved here. So I go to shade the area. Now I want in between, so I choose this last option. It asks for the first x value. Well, the first x value is 31. It asks for the second x value, which is 40. And I say OK. So then uh, this uh, graph shows me the region that's associated with the probabilities that I'm interested in. And this is the numerical value of the probability that I'm interested in. All right. Of course, you can do this with any distribution. So pretty much all you have to do, it all works about the same way. Pretty much all you have to do is go to that box and choose the distribution you want. Then when it asks for the appropriate parameters, enter those parameters. And then enter the uh, x values again appropriately. And you'll get your answers and your answers. So this will work exactly the same way for all distributions. Uh, all that will change from distribution to distribution is the required parameters. For example, for the uniform, it was the endpoints of the interval. For the normal, it was the mean and the uh, standard deviation. I'm just going to start talking about the exponential distribution now. Uh, for that, it would be something else, as we will see. Uh, so uh, uh, so there, as long as you know what the parameter to enter is, then you can answer all questions using any one of these. All right. So Let's talk about the so called exponential distribution. <laughs> 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 to 
suppose we have a Poisson process with parameter lambda. Lambda, of course, is a positive constant. <coughs> probability that there will be a distance or time whatever of x between two successive occurrences is given as f of x equals to lambda e to the minus lambda x. Here, x can be anything between 0 and infinity. Uh, so is that the probability that there will be a distance time of x? Right. So uh, in some problems, uh, uh, it's given in terms of distance. In some problems, it's given in terms of time. Usually, we'll give in terms of time unit time, but and we say the random variable x has uh, an exponential distribution. distance or time of x, what's the... Uh, between, between, between uh, two successive occurrences. Now, in the Poisson distribution, what was my question of interest? Right, so if I tell you something happens three times in an hour, What's the probability that it will happen five times in an hour? Or what's the probability that it will happen seven times in an hour? Now here, what's my question of interest? If something is going to happen three times in an hour, what is the probability that there will be 15 minutes between two occurrences? What's the probability that there will be 10 minutes between two occurrences? Exit. So that's it. But uh, here, uh, over there, in the Poisson distribution, the variable of interest was what the number of occurrences. And that made Poisson a discrete distribution, because we count the number of occurrences. Here, in the exponential distribution, the uh, variable of interest is time, which is continuous. So therefore, exponential becomes a continuous. So these are almost inverses of each other, if you will. Uh, but uh, this is, a, uh, of course, a continuous distribution. So what does this look like, this function? Well, when x is 0, of course, e to the 0 is 1. So this is just lambda, whatever lambda is. And then, as uh, x increases, this increases rapidly towards uh, 0. So the gram looks something like this. So that is pretty much what you refer to in physics, an exponential decay function, uh, starting from lambda. So the bigger the lambda, the uh, higher your starting point, and more rapid it would be the decay. Right. And this is indeed uh, a uh, probability uh, density function because if you integrate this function from 0 to infinity, 
What must I get as an answer? Let's see. Well, I can take lambda out. Remember, the integral of e to the ax is 1 over e to the x, so it's minus 1 over lambda e to the minus lambda x. These cancel out, so you get minus e to the minus lambda x between 0 and infinity. At infinity, this is 0, minus minus makes plus, at 0, this is 1, so this is just equal. Can you leave it there? I forgot. Okay. I want to do another part on today, and they told me you couldn't do that. I will hear you like the brackets. The mean of an exponential distribution. But we can do one Exponential distribution, mu or e of x, is given as, now, what should it be? What's the mean of the Poisson distribution with uh, parameter lambda? Lambda. Uh, so if one time unit, if one time unit, I expect what does uh, the uh, exp expected value of the uh, Poisson distribution mean lambda means? It means in given one time unit, I expect this thing to happen lambda many times. So if I expect something uh, to happen in one unit time, I expect something to happen lambda many times, how much time do I expect to pass between two occurrences? In error. If something is going to happen 10 times in an hour, how much time do you expect? Uh, if something is going to happen 10 times in one hour, how much time do you expect in between? Six minutes. Which is what? One over 10, that unit divided by. So what would you think the um, expected value would be here? One over lambda. Of course, you can show this also mathematically by just integrating x times e to the minus lambda x, which is very easy. But it's much better to get it in this intuitive fashion. And variance is 1 over lambda squared. So standard deviation is the square root of that, which is 1 over lambda. that x is less than a is uh, 
Okay, so uh, my probability density function is uh, lambda e to the minus lambda, which is 2 times e to the minus 2x. So uh, probability of x less than or equal to 2 would be integral from uh, 0 to 2. Well, because See, this uh, function is, of course, something that looks like this. So now if I want probability of being less than 2, it means I'm interested in this area. So in, I'm interested in 0 to 2, 2 e to the minus 2x, uh, not 2, 4, I'm sorry, lambda less 4. Or e to the minus 4 is This is 4 times the integral of e to the minus 4x dx, which is 4 times negative 1 over 4 times e to the minus 4x. So it's negative e to the minus 4x when you integrate this. And you want it between 0 and 2. And 2, this gives you negative e to the minus 8. Minus minus makes plus. At 0, this is 1. So the answer will be 1 minus e to the negative 8. Why is that negative 1 over Because always keep in mind this simple rule. The integral of e to the ax if dx is negative. 1 over a e to the ax. And this was negative, so it is 1. What is the probability that x will be greater than or equal to 3? Well, in this case, I want this area. Therefore, I want integral from 3 to infinity of 4 times e to the minus 4x. Again, when you integrate this, this will just be minus e to the minus 4x between 3 and infinity. And the infinity, this would be 0. Minus minus makes plus e to the minus 4. Of course, e to the power negative 12 is pretty much uh, 0. So this will pretty much uh, be 0. So there's almost no chance that there will be more than three hours between two consecutive occurrences. Can we use the same trick that we used in normal distributions and just do one minus from zero to three? Oh yeah, you can do that for any distribution because under any distribution, the total area is one. So if it's easier to integrate from zero to three, then you do that and subtract from one. If it's easier to integrate from three to infinity, you do that. So it doesn't matter. We either make that the same. All right, part C. What's the uh, probability that x is between 1 and 5? Well, now, in this case, you want to find this area. So this well, is what part is this? Zero? zero? I'm what sorry? Mean? What does that mean? C here. This one? No, that's uh, right part there. Part C down there? Yeah. Oh, that's part C. C, yeah. Right. 1 to 5, uh, 4 e to the minus 4x dx. Again, when you take it, you'll just get negative e to the minus 4x between 1 and 5. Again, you can put the upper and lower limits and do the calculation. So there's nothing interesting here. Um, can you go down? So. So what is that graph showing us? That I'm interested in the area between 1 and 5. 
And where is the answer? Negative e to the negative four x. Four x, and you first put five in place of x, and then you put one in place of x, and takes the difference, and that's just. Are you going to do the calculation? Or you just go to check. No, then you can just do the calculation. Now, uh, okay. part B, I want to find an A, number A, such that when I calculate this area, this area would be 0 0.05. All right? So I'm looking for an A, such that when I calculate this area, I'll get 0 0.05. Well, that means if I integrate from 0 to a, 4e to the minus 4x dx, I should get 0 0.05. But this integral we know is negative e to the minus 4x. So this is negative e to the minus 4a minus minus plus 1. Subtract one from both sides, which means e to the negative four a is one two point nine five. They have reciprocals of both sides. And what's one over point nine five? One point one. Zero five two six. One point oh five. Okay. Now take ln's of both sides. And this is what's clearly a very small number. So it goes to zero. Divide both sides by four. So you can find the value of it. Is it point zero zero three or five? Five. Point zero zero five, right? Five. Right. Zero. And then A equals how is that point? Now you're dividing it by four. That it's point zero five. It's not point zero zero. Or point zero five? I mean, it's just not that. Yeah. Or point zero six. Yeah, it's just not that. Oh, it's, it's point zero five. Yeah, point zero one. Whatever you think. Yeah, those are things we can run really calculate. So I'm not worried about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, how would we do this? How would how would we do this on the name? So to solve this very same problem. On the mini tab. And view probability. Okay. Now I'll here choose the exponential distribution. When I choo uh, choose the exponential distribution, now me that asks for 
a couple of things that uh, we really did not talk about. That's for a scale and a threshold. So as parameters, it asks for a scale and threshold. Threshold is where your graph is starting from. So your graph is going to start from zero. So the threshold you will always leave at zero. So then you don't worry about threshold. That's and we're talking about x-axis, right? Right. Okay. No, no, the y-axis. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, right. same, not so, but anyway, so it's the it's that so the threshold is always zero. Uh, it will ask for a threshold in many many different types of distributions. In almost all of them, the threshold is going to be left as zero. So don't worry about it. the scale. Uh, that's important to remember. Scale is one over lambda. For scale, you'll put one over. Lambda. Scale is the mean. So if in a problem dealing with an exponential distribution, I tell you the mean is 5, then you will put 5 here. But if I say lambda is 5, then you will put 0 0.2 here, 1 over 5. Right? So be careful about that. So in our case, uh, I gave you the lambda to be 4. I gave you lambda to be 4. For scale, therefore, you will choose what? 0.25. Now, let's go to the shaded area. And let's say OK. Oh, we didn't do anything. No. Okay, now let's go to the gra uh, graph again. <coughs> yeah, threshold is always zero. Shaded area. Let's uh, work on that last part, between one and five. So I want between one and five, so here is one. And here is five. I say okay. And, uh, I don't know if you can ever see it, it's such a small portion of the graph, but it's just, it starts at 1 goes to 5, and in this whole area is 0 0.01832, whatever way you can. So this is, of course, a little bit faster than doing it by hand, and also gives you a nice graph, uh, but of course, in a uh, test setting, you'll have to do it by hand, but in a homework setting, of course, you can use the, uh, or you should, I think, uh, use the uh, mini tab and get your answers this way. Now, how can I answer this last part? Find A such that for all the x less than A is 0.5. I want to find an A such that this is 0 0.05. Well, here's how I would do it. I will go to graph for the distribution plot, view probability, same things. So of course all of these are said. I'll go to the shaded area. Now this time I am going to be entering a what is my known quantity? Yeah? Probability. A probability. An area. An area or a probability. So I will choose this time probability. Probability. Now, this probability is the probability of what? Being less than. So I want this less than probability, right? So I choose the left tail probability. And I want it to be, hey, uh, this point of is over here. I say, OK. So your computations were right. We got 0 0.012 actually as the answer. So I need uh, that A to be 0 0.012 something. What was the threshold difference? No, it's okay. Okay. 
No, it's not. Did it cut off part of the graph? Yeah. So, you know, if, if I go between 0 and 0 0.01, the area I cover will be 0 0.05. So starting from zero, how far must I go so that the area I cover is 0 0.05? I must go to 0 0.01. So the only thing to pay attention here is the scale. So the scale is the mean. So if I give you lambda, make sure to take 1 over lambda. If I give you the mean, just use that number. define functions in general? Well, when you define a function in calculus algebra, what do you do? You give a formula for it. For example, if you want to define a uh, parabola, you say f of t equals to 5t squared minus 7t plus 8, etc., etc. Uh, you have an expression that is uh, here. We do not have an expression. <coughs> we do not have a close this definition of this function. So we are defining this function in only in terms of an integral. We do not have a formula for it. So it's that complicated the construct. We do not have a formula for it. Now, here you have an integration problem. Uh, you, what's the variable of integration? X. So when you integrate this, if you could, the if underline five times is a big <laughs> if. Uh, so if we uh, integrate this, your answer would be an expression that contains what? An X and T. T. But then you will put 0 and infinity in place of X and evaluate it. So X's will disappear, turn into numbers. So the remaining expression will only be an expression that contains the variable T. So this will just be a function of T. And that function of T is what we call the gamma function. 
not that uh, not only that we cannot give a formula for the gamma function, we cannot even give a formula for the, some of the values of the gamma function. I can only tell you what the values of the gamma function are for certain special uh, values of t. So, for example, if you want to calculate gamma of 5.74, that will be a very complicated task. But uh, we can calculate the values of this function for some values of t. Let's uh, see how we can do that. First, uh, What is gamma of 1? What will this be? This will be integral 1. 0 to infinity. x to the power 1 minus 1, which is 0. So this will be just e to the minus x dx, which is minus e to the minus x between 0 and infinity. And this will just be 1. So, this is easy. Gamma of 1 is equal to 1. So we know one value of this function. Can we find other values of this function? Well, uh, a recursion formula is what I'm going to give you. A recursion Now let's apply integration by part to this. Let's let u be equal to x to the power t minus 1. And let's let e be equal to e to the minus x dx. Then du would be t minus 1 times x to the power t minus 2 dx. And d would be minus e to the minus x. First off, do you agree with all these? So therefore, this integral can be written as u times v, x to the power t minus 1, e to the minus x between 0 and minus the integral v du minus the integral t minus 1 times x to the t minus 2 e to the minus x but this will be plus because there is no minus dx between 0 but at infinity this term is 0 at 0 this term is 0 so this term drops is so that an integral or is that a straight line over there? Integral. This one is a straight line. Gamma, I get gamma of t equals to t minus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity x to the power t minus 2 e to the minus x. Now what can I say about this integral? Equal to your, uh, what is this integral the other guy? What's this integral equal to? Yeah, but uh, just that integral, x to the power p minus 2 times e to the minus x. Think in terms of the definition of the gamma function. Gamma t minus 1. Right. If I put t minus 1 here, what would I get? x to the t minus 2 e to the minus x, exactly this. So this is just gamma of t minus 2. t minus 1. So therefore, we get this recursion formula. Gamma of t is equal to t minus 1 times gamma of t minus 1. And 
is a very important formula and in all applications that deal with properties of the gamma function, be it in physics, be it in calculus, you, you really exploit this uh, recursion formula a lot. Uh, we can do uh, the, the following. We can find some values of the gamma function using this formula as follows. Now, I know gamma of 1 is 1. And I know gamma of t is t minus 1 times gamma of t minus 1. So what can I say about gamma of 2? <coughs> well, it will be 2 minus 1, which is 1, times gamma of 1. But gamma of 1 was 1, so gamma of 2 would be 1. What can I say about gamma of 3? Well, it will be 3 minus 1 times gamma of 2. So it will be 2. What can I say about gamma of 4? Well, it will be 3 times gamma of 3, or 3 times 2, which is 6. What can I say about gamma of 5? Well, it will be 4 times gamma of 4, which will be 24. Is it factorial? Mm -hmm. Ah, so you recognize this as the, <coughs> the factorial, right? So this is 1 factorial, this is 2 factorial, this is 3 factorial, this is 4 factorial. So if t is a positive integer, then gamma of t is equal to t minus 1 factor. So this is what this complicated function does. What we did is we generalized the idea of a factorial. Now, factorial is only defined for what? <coughs> Integer values, right? So, uh, you don't need to know this, but just... Uh, so if you want... So if you are plotting the factorial, Zero factor, one, uh, zero, one factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6, 4 factorial is 24, etc. So the graph should be only these distinct points. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can find factorial successes. So, that's the gamma function. That's why you need the gamma function. So what the gamma function does is it fills in between these gaps, makes this into a continuous function, where at the whole numbers you get the factorial. So this is a generalization of the factorial to continuous variables. Now you have to be very careful with this. Uh, there are lots of sort of quasi-mathematical uh, claims about the uh, factorial function and the, uh, the gamma function, etc. So be very careful. Um, when you talk about the factorial, it only applies to positive integers and zero. When you talk about the gamma function, it is a continuous function where at whole numbers it takes on the values of the factorial. So the only true generalization of the factorial is the gamma function. All right. Uh, now, there is another result. Uh, which is way too complicated for us to prove. And that is that gamma of 1 half is the square root of 1. So that way, you can also define gamma function for halves of integers. For example, what is gamma of 3 halves? Well, according to this recursion formula, it is 3 halves minus 1, which is 1 half, times gamma of 1 half. So it's 1 half times the square root of 5. What is gamma of 5 halves? Well, 5 halves minus 1, which is 3 halves, times gamma of 3 halves, 
which is three halves times one half times the square root of the line. Are these all pi's? Yeah. What is gamma of seven halves? What is seven halves minus one times gamma of seven halves minus one, which is five halves times three halves times one half times four. And you can see a pattern, right? Uh, so um, as you go on, on top, you will have all the odd numbers multiplied, and on the bottom you have two to some power times the square root of pi. So if you uh, are going to seven, you have all the odd numbers up to one before seven, one, three, five, and you have three, two, so it's two, uh, one times three times. So the next one will be one times three times five times seven over two to the power four times square root of pi. Then it's one, three, seven, nine, two to the power five square root of pi, etc. Uh, which is, of course, uh, completely unnecessary to know as far as this course is concerned. But uh, so therefore, these are the only values of the gamma function that we can calculate without advanced calculus. The integer values and also halves of integers. So next time, I'll uh, finish the business uh, review. Thursday. Thursday. <laughs>